Hey guys, recently I picked up an Admiral 20X122 that's a 10 inch set in the giant uh, Bakelite cabinet. And it turned out that the cabinet was okay, but the picture tube and chassis inside of it were really trashed. Now luckily I had no, a spare Admiral chassis and picture tube that seemed to fit in there okay. Uh, I then uh, decided to pick over the chassis hoping I could find a few useful bits and pieces and I really got lucky. First up, I found a control that will work in this set, which is a nearly impossible to find combination power switch, volume control, and focus control. The focus control in particular is hard to find because it's this giant 2 watt wire round uh, portion here, then the volume control stacked on the back of that, and the power switch finally at the back. Now this set when I bought it had been partially restored by someone else and uh, probably the focus control was bad and they had to replace it but they couldn't find one of these so what they did is they put in a control that does have a power switch and volume control but the focus control is no longer here this knob is not really uh, doing anything anymore what they did is they drilled a hole in the back of the set and stuck a separate control back there for focus. Also I noticed that the shaft for the volume control is all wrong. This one is a split uh, shaft here, but it should actually be a half moon shaft like on this one. So what I'm going to do is slide this out, remove that new control and this control, put this one in and wire it all up properly. Not only will both these controls then work properly, but uh, the knob should have fit on here better too. Now the other piece I've really been looking hard for is over by the sink. Now I actually do have another Admiral 20X122 that I got uh, oh, about a year and a half ago. It was in pretty rough shape but it was all complete except for a few knobs which I was able to pick up and this metal piece. What this metal piece is, is the shield that goes over the RF and IF ampl amplification stages. On the other chassis I've got, it's just wide open, which means it's very susceptible to pick up any noise and interference. I had actually n never seen another complete 20X122 chassis, so I don't even know what they're supposed to look like. It's not what I was expecting, so I'm really glad I found this. Now, just like the, uh, the chassis, in that set this one is also quite rusty that one I spent quite a bit of time removing all the rust using products like this navel jelly and a rust oleum rust stripper because the chassis is pretty complex there's all the tube sockets and shields and whatnot and I didn't want to completely take it apart just to remove the rust so I just used a small brush q-tips and slowly worked my way around it but for a piece like this where it's totally free and unattached to anything, I'm going to use a different process, which is rust removal by electrolysis. Done it a couple times before, was really happy with the results, so I thought you guys might be interested in seeing what that process is like. So, the basic idea is you submerge your rusty piece in an electrolyte and hook up a car battery, or charger rather, to it and a sacrificial piece of steel. Uh, you make sure that this is the negative lead or the cathode and the anode or positive lead is your sacrificial piece of metal. It's called sacrificial because it will get eaten away by the electro electrolysis process. Make sure that you use either cast iron or uh, carbon steel don't use stainless steel because during the process you could liberate some chromium which could make some uh, toxic uh, compounds that you really don't want to get on your skin. For the electrolytes uh, I went online and it, it turns out that the uh, easiest, cheapest and highly recommended thing to use is simply Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda which chemically I believe is oh, it's here somewhere. Uh, sodium carbonate. I believe you can also use sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. 
One thing you don't want to use is table salt. Some guys have used it, so you can use it okay, but uh, when you use that, I believe some chlorine gas could be liberated, which is kind of nasty. So, why not just stick with this? I think I got this whole big box for like $1.50 or something like that. So, uh, recommended concentration is one tablespoon of the washing soda to one gallon of water. So, I'm going to mix that up, and then I'll pull out my... Uh, big cold chisel that I use for sacrificial iron and pull out a charger and show you how it all hooks up together. Here's the power supply I'll be using. This one is especially nice because you can not only monitor both voltage and current but you can regulate voltage or current. From what I've read and from what I've found experimentally it's best to regulate the current and set it to about one amp. What that will mean is this power supply will adjust the output voltage as the load varies to guarantee that you're getting one amp of current. Well, like I said, for the leads, the negative goes to the piece that you want to remove the rust from. So, in that case, it's this piece of rusty metal. And you want to keep it submerged, or at least all the rusty parts submerged. And here is my sacrificial piece of steel. In this case, it's a big old cold chisel. I've used it a few times, and you can see how nasty and pitted it's going to get. And this is the positive or anode. Do not let these two pieces of metal touch or even come really close to together because the uh, that will really draw excessive current and of course if they touch you'll be shorting out your power supply. And that goes to the positive. So here's a nice spark there. Got my one amp of current going. And we should see some bubbling action. Yeah, I mean you can see it there on the anode. Now this process can take a while depending on how rusty and pitted your item is and how large your surface area is. So I will come back to this in a few hours. When I did this before in a piece of metal about this size, it was a little bit rustier. And that will run for, oh, at least 12 hours to get all the rust off. This isn't quite as rusty, so I suspect it will go a little bit faster. But time will tell. It's been a couple hours, and as you can see, I've got a bubbling mess here <laughs> on the anode side. I got some rust-colored bubbles, and on the cathode side, I got some whitish bubbles. So I think it's time to pull this out and see how things are going. And cut the power, disconnect the lead, and oh, things are looking pretty good. So what happens is the rust uh, actually kind of turns black. They need to uh, rub it off with a paper towel or if it's a more deeply pitted, uh, maybe a, a wire brush. So I'm going to take this over to the sink and wash it off and then uh, rub it down and see if there's any lot of, uh, rust left. But it uh, looks pretty good to me. Here it is cleaned up a bit. So you can see this black stuff just uh, comes off, you wipe it, and then uh, I'm going to use a little bit of steel wool and WD-40. As you can see, there are no more signs of red rust on this. Now, right now, the, the steel is very clean and it will start rusting right away. So you really got to do something to it, uh, either clean it really good and paint it, or rub it down with some WD-40 or oil to uh, keep the air from getting uh, at it, or it's just going to start rusting again, especially when it's all raw and clean like this. And here it is after a WD-40 wipe down. I think it looks pretty good. I think it'll look even better after a light sanding and a little bit of steel wool. So it's a cheap, simple, effective way to remove rust from metal, uh, as opposed to using rust removers which are uh, harsh acids and such. Now as for this sludge I have left over, it's actually pretty benign stuff. It's basically diluted soapy water with some rust in it so 
I don't think you'd have too much trouble just pouring it down the drains. This will keep for a while, so if you had more rusty items, you could just pop them in there and keep going. Even though the water looks pretty sludgy, it's still just as effective. And if you're interested in the actual chemistry behind this, go ahead and Google for rust removal by electrolysis, and you'll find all kinds of useful info. Hope you enjoyed this video on removing rust by electrolysis.